Good tidings, all you beautiful people of this beautiful planet. It is Liga Unlocked. We have returned Eric and Mark here with you for a couple of certified banger playoff matches. We head into the real nitty-gritty top four action in the LCK, and it does not matter the power level of D-plus Kia coming into playoffs. There's just something about this team and something about them when they match up against Gen G in particular, they always deliver an absolute slapper of a series and today was no different. It's a great example, once again, why things shift when you move into playoffs, you move into best of type of scenarios, that's where things really start to pick it up, especially in the LCK, moving to best of five, when you have players like Showmaker, like Kingen on this D plus Kia team able to step up and unlock some next level gameplay. So even because you know this one was going to go five, especially after you see maybe not the first game that was fully controlled by Genji, but from there you felt like this was going to be a competitive one. It was full drama to even get to Silver Scrapes because you have D plus looking like it should be an easy closeout, a couple of big base defenses from Genji, and then all of a sudden you need a miracle play out of Showmaker and they end up having a Nexus race. Oh, yeah, man, and it, you're not going to get that one is the way that it plays out here for this D+. Plus. You're looking at this game, and you're watching this series play out, and you're right. You called it. There's an avenue that you can find D+, plus Kia closing this thing out before you get to that Silver Scrapes, that Game 5. I'm looking at that Game 3, the crucial one, of course. The Udyr. Udyr, as much as I'm, I'm, I'm bringing up king in and talking about how important he was in this series which he was and did play a good stabilizing factor for d plus kia that mistake was a really crucial one and one in a moment where i think if you capitalized on that you would have found a way to close it out before you give gen g that opportunity to get the kill shot yeah i mean you can talk about the mistake being picking the looter from the get-go it's that number one mistake but yeah that game three d plus was looking real good up until the very last elder dragon fight i think they even still have like a 4k gold lead before that fight starts but genji comes up clutch but a very different looking series all of a sudden the pressure's on gen g if d plus comes away with that set instead we head to the game five which by no means did gen g run away with this this was absolutely back and forth there were some incredibly close team fights extended team fights and it felt like skirmish to skirmish you were highlighting showmakers azir popping off some fights keen's Cassante, kingen's atrox but it is the talia for chovi that gets the last laugh in this fifth game this is this fifth game it wasn't that complete blowout which we've come you know almost to expect when we run into this fifth game is kind of the way the pattern runs out someone is too mentally exhausted something happens it it leads to that type of path. You got the skirmish, you got that ping pong back and forth rally from both of these squads. Getting an advantage here, getting an advantage there, coming back through here, getting that response over there, all those things. But you laid it out. The final answer in this series was Chovy's Talia and the role that it played in this game five of how strong it was able to get so early, which we know Chovy pushes his lane super hard, keeps you locked in to trying to push that way back will spawn and get your gold he's already got the gold and on something like talia he is using that mobility that extra path and speed around the map to get through and make sure everyone else is feeling that pain of the wallet of chovy and this series this game five crucial example of it and that's the level up from chovy that we've talked about coming into this split is now impacting the side lanes when he gets that big laning lead uh it was a bit anticlimactic because after all these insane team fights it ends with kind of a rough tp from kingen and two d plus members just get caught out contesting a dragon that's not even for soul it's just the third dragon for genji it's a kind of a questionable thing. I think there was a little things that play into kind of where you got to that situation before, of course, with Genji getting the Baron and, and, and what that type of push meant. But then, yeah, it is that TP comes through. You get Cassante. He manages to stick right onto you and keep you through, and, and the rest of the team knocks you down. 
Azir goes down a little bit later, just behind the Dragon Pit, and that is the ticket to put that full press on for Gen G, and that's all it took. It's crazy to have it come down to that type of, you know, small little mistakes, these little things, which are obviously understandable mistakes in the moment type of thing, costly mistakes in the moment at the end of it. For how often Keen was in the back line of D+, he was deathless in this fifth game, and seeing Cassante paired with the Lulu spamming shields on him, I'm expecting a fully fleshed out novel from Showmaker about how much he hates Cassante after this set. There's no words to contain it, what we saw from this Cassante, especially Keen. Big time ups to Keen and He played and it great, but yeah, it's bust. You do got to give credit on the side of Genji. Keen and Chovy, mega game five performances. Clutch, big time step ups in that final game of the series. But yes, it is the Cassante doing those Cassante things. And we know if there's anybody in the LCK that does not like to, to see that Cassante gaming action happen, it's your boy Showmaker. And it, listen, when you look at the bot lane in this set, aiming, yeah, he still got caught out a couple of times, but overall had a pretty solid performance. Pays for having a couple of Lulu games and comps built around him on the Zeri and Aphelios. Kind of a lackluster series from him individually from start to finish. You know, luckily, if you are Gen G, you can afford for Pays to have a relatively pedestrian series when you got guys like Keen and Chovy stepping up to do that big heavy lifting and Canyon, of course, facilitating it all out there on the Rift, which I want to make a quick mention to say Lucid, Canyon, that type of matchup. Of course, I think Canyon gets the edge, but for where Lucid was and what you were expecting, good performance and good check-in with him through these playoffs. More great experience picked up from him. And then on the side of Gen G, it keeps rolling on, but you do need to be cautious with this series played out. Because I'm telling you, the T1s, the Hanwha Lifes of the LCK, you can't have pedestrian pace. Even if you've got the carries and Chovy and Keen taking those big strong loads, you gotta make sure it's pace stepping up in that bottom lane as well to contend with the firepower that those other teams got. And even if you're not calling this an A plus performance out of Gen G on the day, if D-plus plays to this level, they could compete against either Hanwha or T1 and maybe even come away with a win. Yeah, especially considering, again, laying it out. Best of scenarios. You start to play like this. You start to bring performances up. People start to take notice. You start changing your pick and ban situation. All these things then start to play out further dominoes, which take you away strictly from the on-paper X's and O's type of matchup that you get sometimes in that one series round. Best of five, it stands out a little bit more, a little bit more dramatics for the LCK a team like D plus Kia showing us that they've got enough to make it interesting. If this is just the appetizer for a little bit of, let's say, T1 Hanwha life, then we're going to be eating pretty damn good in these LCK playoffs. Yeah, man, this Hanwha life T1 matchup coming on the heels of what we got here. Cannot wait. This one should have a lot of firepower, a lot of heat, good back and forth from both of these squads. If D plus Kia was able to step up that way against Gen G and show us that type of throwdown, I cannot wait until we get five games of Hanwha Life versus T1. Not to be outdone by the LCK. The LPL says, you know, we do game fives more often and better than any other region on the planet. We had a little Weibo versus the wind streaking LNG making their debut. And apparently Weibo liked the format they went with against IG and almost getting reverse sweat because they look calm, cool, and collected for two games. All of a sudden, LNG finally wakes up to bounce back. And even, you know, game three, pretty convincing. Game four, 16 kills to zero. Weibo doesn't get a single kill. And all of a sudden, LNG is riding this huge wave of momentum into game five. Uh, that wave of momentum gets broken up right away in <laughs> that game five, unfortunately, thanks to Mr. Xiaohu and the rest of Weibo Gaming. Holy heck, what a series this was as you laid out, kind of going through it. Of course, Weibo jumping out to the early advantages, early lead in the series. LNG, wake up. Mr. Scout locks in and says, I've got to make sure that my team is not getting ousted at this point. I got to get us some wins. Got to get us to this finish line. And they get to that game five. And as you mentioned, the game four, as dominating as a fashion as you possibly could have, as clean as you could be throughout that game, 
leading all that momentum into that game five. Everything should have been in the favor of LNG until it wasn't, thanks to Weibo Gaming. And listen, the honestly pick to look at throughout the series was the Tristana mid because earlier on, both Xiaohu and Scout looked fantastic on it. And Scout, you could tell he was feeling himself a little in the game five and as he should, because up to that point, let's be honest, he was having an incredible series, but a little too hypey at times on the Tristana mid, which, hey, we've seen pretty much every player on the planet get a little bit too hypey on the Tristana and jump forward. And unfortunately, that happened to Scout in Game 5. Mid lane, bot lane, top lane, I don't care where you're really throwing this Tristana, you will experience some of those gaming moments where someone pushes it a little bit too much, even if you are someone as wonderful as Scout, as accomplished as the world champion that we have talked about. Uh, you can make these type of mistakes and you can make them in a crucial game five moment. And Weibo Gaming more than ready to pick up the pieces for that one. Let's give a quick little shout out to Mr. ZDZ in the top side, what he was rolling through in this series. A little bit of the shy action in game five, pulling off the, the mega trade while you're getting dived by pretty much all five people. Yeah, survives long enough on the Renekton for the game-clinching team fight for the rest of the squad to show up, which ends up being an ace over for them as everyone tries to kill the Croc. And even earlier in the series, my guy's playing Varus top, so he is he is definitely channeling some of that the shy energy, but with a whole lot less deaths to his name in this set. <laughs> yes, so far that's what we're we're gonna take. Not you don't get the quite the highs, right? But you're not getting some of those lows that we have seen from it in Weibo taking that consistency through with them and now consistently climbing through these ranks of the LPL playoffs in front of them. They have bought themselves a date against JDG. And normally- They're sweating. Yeah, normally any other LPL team is sweating, getting lined up against JDG, but there's something built different about Weibo Gaming where they are saying, bring it on, give us JDG. And it's JDG that are sitting there sweating going, oh boy, we're about to get Dark Horse upset. It's it's feeling like there's a little sprinkle of magic in this Weibo run so far. I know it's only been two sets, but back-to-back -back game fives where they kind of int for two games and are almost reverse swept, that's, that's the type of magical run to world finals that we are feeling where they have absolutely no business winning these series, but they somehow get it done when it matters most. So yeah, only team in the LPL that has had JDG's number for the better part of a year and a half is Weibo. It's Weibo Gaming, and they're going to be lined up and ready for it. Light and pretty good shape, of course. Going to be a tough matchup with Ruler on the other side. We always know that, but the other one that, again, you're checking in for this one. Yes, there might not be the shy for Weibo Gaming, but there's also no 369 for JDG from last year. It's either going to be Flanger or maybe Sheer, whoever it's going to be in that top side you know that I think after this series, and especially after seeing that Renekton play clinch it out, you can feel like you've gotten an edge for Weibo Gaming. And normally you're terrified of matching up against Kanavi, but Zhao Hao showing against the dude he replaced that he's been an upgrade kind of across the split uh, over Weiwei, the guy who got, helped get them to finals at Worlds, but a fantastic series uh, for Zhao Hao, even surviving some Nidalee action and a lot of brand action from Weiwei. Yeah, again, we're still seeing that brand pop up in the LPL. I think that was pretty much the first region that I saw that. It's been a few up. weeks since we've seen it anywhere. It's been more than a few weeks, and it certainly has been more than a few patches that we have seen that one rolling in, in that spot. So he's he's ready for the Kanavi uh, fun flight of crazy picks when he's warmed up with the brand in Italy. He's coming out of Weiwei. Had the rare Tuesday bit of action in the LEC as we kind of continued through these losers brackets and Mad Lions had the unfortunate draw of G2 in that first round. So hoping to bounce back, but they did not look like they were ready to bounce back against Giant X after getting smashed in game one. And honestly, they looked on their way to getting smashed in game three. You've got a 5-0 Zeri, a 3k gold lead, and Giant X, they just sit on their hands and kind of wait to lose the game. They play way too scared and passive. 
Uh, well, I don't know what you're talking about. They had all the time in the world. It's not like the enemy team had a well-known hyper mega scaling option that as the game gets later is going to get these pizza slice boomerangs going all around you. Oh, yeah, that's right. Sivir is in the game. And Just attack yesterday. the minions and kill the team with the ricochet. That's the secret. You let, you let it get to a 5-6 item Sivir. Oh, you're certainly going to feel a 5-6 item Sivir difference coming through. And yes, Supa on the Mad Lions finds a way to get that one across to Giant X. Overall, you're left more or less disappointed in this series because, of course, with the Mad Lions Koi, you were expecting tough matchup against G2. This will be where things heat back up. We'll warm you, simmer you back up on the stove to a good warm temperature before you rise the heat back up to a top notch level for playoffs. This was just sitting on a, on a just on the stove. The stove wasn't even on. There was no heat coming through from this lukewarm from the Mad Lions Koi in this series is kind of my reaction. Didn't see anything that is making me jump out of my seat about it. And on the side of the disappointment, you go to Giant X because you're right. This could have been a step forward for this lineup, for this team. And it just simply didn't uh, materialize for them. And especially because of in inaction, you know, not able to come to any decision making on this type of things in that game three, all sorts of, uh, of excuses and avenues for it. it didn't get done. That's the simple thing for Giant X. And listen, kicking this series off, Jackie's is on Silas. He's taunting, he's spamming emotes, feeling great. And then we get him on Azir in back-to-back -back games and he just... He feels like a completely different player on that pick and hasn't had the impact on it really throughout the whole split. He's been more of these melee, assassin, less control mage type of players because Frescawi on the Ari in games two and three had 2,000 times more impact than Jackie's did on his ear. Yeah, that was the disappointing thing. I think number one, it, it just kind of goes to illustrate what type of player Jackie's is, the champion pool early in his career and what it is and where he gravitates toward, where he finds that strength, the Silas, things like Nico, right? Those are the things you love to see and are getting super excited about. Something like Azir doesn't quite fit in there. And, and, and not every mid laner that we roll through, not every great mid laner that we roll through is a great Azir player or someone that gravitates towards that style just so happens to be that the majority do and we have seen a lot of it we've seen that the that strong general commander type pick in pro play didn't quite come through and get that a, a appearance from jackie's hey man when he's 85 percent presence in the mid lane you better learn how to play the emperor in that mid lane so something to work on heading into the summer split for giant x before they hit the rift you had team heretics against sk and I'll be honest, after game one, much like this other series, I thought it was the end of the road again for Team Heretics, but I forgot about the Niski Corky because that is one of the most egregious package deliveries that you will see in a professional game. I'll tell you what, I can name at least two people, myself and Niski, that would like to forget about that quirky package. Because, oh, brother, that was not a good look for anybody. Never mind, of course, someone like Niski, who has a lot to still prove to the doubters, to the haters, to the community that is against him in these type of moments. Big playoffs and everything else for SK, especially taking on that veteran role that he has with this lineup. He has been a good and key important part of this team. He's also been parts of when they have faltered, when they have disappointed you. And that's what one of the ways to take out this series is one of those opportunities missed. And especially one where I feel like the power level that we have seen from this SK team, where they can provide to be an interesting threat to the rest of the LEC, we're not going to get to see that through the rest of these playoffs because of this one. And even more jarring when Niski's playing like this, it really makes Zwiru look at an even higher level. And let's be honest, back-to-back -back Azir games, maybe two of his best games from the entire split. And and yes, I, I, I want to agree with that. And I do think that he deserves a rose petal for that one. We're not giving out the full rose for those performances just quite yet, but definitely getting the rose petal. My man, he, he is certainly providing a lot of positive and a lot less of that variance in what you're going to be getting from what we saw from Perks last split. Maybe not necessarily the big Luke of the Bazooka Perks type of performances, 
There's some pretty darn good ones and certainly good enough when the rest of this Heretics team, Wonder and Yankos, Flack and Trimby are able to contribute and get on that same page, which I think still is a bit of a work in progress for all you know these veteran combinations on this team. But they did enough in this series to make sure that they're the ones keeping it alive in the LLC. And I mean, truthfully, because SK seems so out of sorts, I mean, even beyond Niski's individual play, there were guys, some guys moving forward while others are going back. Classic, not on the same page, miscommunications across the board for SK. So because of that, despite winning the series, I'm still not feeling great about Heretics in the next round, especially because they're matching up against Fnatic. Yeah, and even, you know, you, you look at Madeline's Koi and with as disappointing and lukewarm as that one, you still can see a little bit more of a path comparative to Team Heretics. And as you laid out, aside from everything with just focusing solely on Team Heretics, you introduce their opponent, which is Fnatic. And the way that Fnatic has been looking, the way that they are shaped up this split. Forget the G2 team. series. That one never happened for them. Just wipe that one clean. Extremely motivated towards being that uh, pinnacle of the LEC, this is going to be a tough matchup for Heretics. And uh, Mad Lions, they advance. They're going against Team Vitality. Definitely a winnable set for them, even though Vitality kind of threw their series against Team BDS. I'm still, I'm still waiting for the flair from MDK that we got in winter on their magical run to finals. I think it's been a lesson for us in that, you know what, you can have that type of immediate early success for a young lineup, and it doesn't necessarily translate to the next split right away. You know, you, you always see these things and you go, yeah, there's that experience. There's that lesson learned. And, you know, you kind of take it as a video game. It's an instant plus two level up. Oh, they're, they're instantly better. To it doesn't quite work like that. It is that ebb and flow of where someone's performance is and where they're, what lessons they're taking away and whether that lesson has set in, whether it's been practiced, all sorts of things. And we're learning that with this Mad Lions Koi team that we're going to, I think, take a little bit more time with some of these positives and as well some of these negatives that are going through with this young lineup. I think what has been steady at the very least, and I do want to give them credit, is El Yoya in the jungle. Throughout all of this, that has been a big part of it. Maybe not the highest of highs that we have seen from him throughout the course of obviously his long LEC career, but with everything understood and what's going on, I do want to make sure that he gets a shout out. This is where the magic started for them in that loser's run in winter. So there's still hope for the MDK rookies and friends plus El Yoya. But that is it today for League Unlock. Eric and Mark here with you, beauties. Thanks for hanging out as always, and we will catch you on that flippity flip.